memorized with the Quran. We, do you feel magnetized? You feel that magnetism. My brothers and sisters, what is your relationship with the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It is indeed full of gems and miracles. And we need to understand it is the only word that is the most true in existence. وَمَنْ أَصْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ قِيلًا وَمَنْ أَصْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ حَدِيثًا Who can there be more true than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Who can there be more true in word or in speech than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yet you and I sometimes are faltering regarding our link with the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is important for us to realize that initially when the Quran was being revealed, it's amazing how the kuffar of Quraysh did not want to listen to a single word of that Quran. And the reason is, as soon as they heard a word, immediately they felt inclined towards it, no matter who they were. Even the enemies felt inclined towards it. And I'm sure you know of the story of Al-Akhnas ibn Shuraik with Abu Sufyan and Abu Jahl. When the Prophet ﷺ used to recite the Quran, in a beautiful voice at night, they used to tiptoe and go in the darkness to listen to the words of the Quran. Yet they were the enemies of Rasulullah sallam. They did not accept him, they rejected him, mainly because of arrogance, not because they belied the message and its contents. They knew deep down, this is the truth. Wallahi, they knew deep down that this is the truth. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَدْ نَعْلَمُ إِنَّهُ لَيَحْزُنُكَ الَّذِي يَقُولُونَ فَإِنَّهُمْ لَا يُكَذِّبُونَكَ وَلَكِنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ يَجْحَدُونَ We know that the utterances they are uttering, they hurt you, they pain you, but we want to advise you. Rasulullah sallallahu is being told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they do not belie this message. They are not disag in disagreement. No, they are in denial. They are denying who are in denial. The oppressors, the wrongdoers are in denial. They are arrogant, full of arrogance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So they did not want to hear the word publicly, but they were tiptoeing at night to listen to the word. And it so happened that as they are coming back, as they are returning from this beautiful listening of the Quran read by none other than Muhammad sallallahu Imagine you and I, we listen to a good reciter and we are soothed by it because it's the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know, if it's recited correctly, alhamdulillah, may Allah grant us the ability to correct our recitation further and to purify it. The correction of recitation is a mission that will only or should I say that cannot be accomplished, but rather it will only progress as our life progresses up to the point of death. We will continue to purify our recitation to correct it and the development of the link with the Quran will increase further and further. It will never be perfect, but the job is to try and get it to perfection such that the day we die, we will be upon the position that is the closest we ever were to the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So with these people, and let's take a look at this incident, and I'm starting off with it because it's important for us to draw a lesson from it. When they were tiptoeing back or coming back, they bumped into each other. What are you doing at this time of the night? May Allah safeguard us. What are you doing at this time of the night? One asks the other, and the other one says, well, what are you doing at this time of the night? And the third one says, well, what are you doing at this time of the night? And it so happened that they told each other the truth. And they said, you know what? We went to listen to the word of Rasulullah sallallahu or the word of this man. We just wanted to hear it. They said, no way. We are the leaders. We are the leaders of Quraysh. We are the ones who are telling the people not to listen. And we are the ones listening. Imagine what hypocrisy. May Allah safeguard us from hypocrisy. Many times we tell our children not to do things, but we are doing them. We tell our children, for example, not to tap their phones in, in disrespect. But we are the ones who are di disrespectful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Jazakallah khair. So it's important for us to know that they agreed we are not going to come back. And the next day, guess what? They were there. And they thought, the one thought that no, the, other, the others are not going to come. Let me go. And they all thought the same thing. So they got back Al-Akhnas ibn Shuraik, Abu Jahl, Abu Sufyan, and they were back there listening. And on the way back, again, they bumped into each other. Guess what? A second time. Leaders of Quraysh. What fools. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. May Allah safeguard us. Guidance was written for Abu Sufyan later on. Radiyallahu anhu. 
But as for the other two, no guidance was written for them. Allah knows best. But they heard the Quran from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Imagine, they heard the Quran. Allahu Akbar. The second day, they bumped into each other again. Hey, what are you doing here? Now there was no question because they knew what they were doing there. So the one looks at the other and they said, okay, let's forget about what we were doing here. Promise we are not going to come back. Second time round. Promise we are not going to come back. No way. There is no chance we're going to come back. Okay. We all took our oaths. Okay. We took our oaths. Went back. Take a guess. The next day they were back for the third time. Subhanallah. The power of the Quran, the beauty of the Quran. It's the word of Allah. It is magnetizing my brothers and sisters. Do you feel that magnetism? Do you feel magnetized with the Quran?